Hi guys and welcome to Studio Wildlife. So if you've watched a few of my recent videos, you'll have seen that in my painting tutorials, I talk about a technique called glazing. And I realized I've not actually explained that to you guys fully. So that's what this video is gonna be about. Explaining to you exactly how to use glazing in your paintings. <laughs> glazing is a very old technique that was used in the old masters paintings. It originated with oil paintings but it can be used for acrylics as well and it basically means using very very thin washes of paint mixed with water if you're using acrylics, using paint thinners if you're using oils and it's just applying very thin transparent washes over the top of already dry paint so that those thin washes alter the colours underneath. And I'm going to show you two processes for this. One is applying over colours that are already down, which will just adjust those colours in a little bit more detail. And the other is starting with a black and white painting and then adding the colours on top. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It does mean so much to us. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get started. As I'm just making this video for you guys and I'm not making an actual painting, I've just got an old piece of wooden board. This is actually the back of a frame that I bought and I've just put a layer of gesso over the surface just to prime it. This is just sort of rubbish piece of wood that I'm doing this painting on to just show you how to do it. If you're doing this in your actual work, I do strongly advise painting on canvases, painting on primed wooden panels that you've made yourself or bought in. Hey, treat your work with respect and create your work on the best surface that you can afford. So for this tutorial, I am using three brushes. Here they are. I've got a one inch filbert brush. I've got a, I think, quarter inch filbert brush, I think it's a number four, and then I've got a small detail brush. So to start off, I've just got on my palette some black and some white paint, and I'm just gonna start blocking in a little bit of fur. I think for this one, I'm gonna do a mix of different fur. So we'll use some stripes and some spots and just some plain fur that doesn't have any patterns. So I'm just gonna start by blocking in where I'd want a stripe. Let's have a big stripe here and another stripe here. I'm just using that big filbert brush to do this. Now, not being too accurate and I'm also not using a reference photo. I am just working from my own mind and my own memory. So let's just try some spots down here now. Okay, and then we'll leave the rest as nice neat fur. So as you might have seen already in some of my videos, I like to start with dark wash fur. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna block in some darker colors. So we've started with the stripes, we're now gonna do the rest of the fur. And again, I'm just using a thin wash to do this because I like that dark base. I've actually got a full tutorial on how to paint fur, both tiger fur and just fur in general in my other videos. So please go and check those out. I'll put a link to those in the description. I think we'll have the fur going in a downwards direction towards my right just because that's the easiest to paint for me with this camera angle. It doesn't matter too much here if you lose your stripes. I'm just going to bring them back in with that black paint. Right, and now we just wait for it to dry. So obviously I've got to wait, but for you guys I'll speed this part of the video up. Sorry about that, I've just adjusted my camera to a different position because I had it rested on the table and I've actually moved it now to my overhead camera arm because when I was painting the table was wobbling a little bit. So anyway, let's get back to it.
Okay, now that's done, the first thing I want you to look at is how white this piece is. So if you are working in black and white first and then you're going to glaze over the top, you need to make sure that you haven't quite pushed everything quite as dark as it will be in the final piece because when you glaze it, some of those bright intense whites are actually going to knock back and you won't be able to see them as intensely, uh, which is good because it knocks back some of those white highlights, but we also it also means that we have to build up on those white highlights again after we've done our glazing. But that's why usually I wouldn't use bright white in my painting, but for this I have used bright white for these final layers of fur, just because I'm gonna glaze over the top of them, which will knock them back. It's important when you start glazing, or before you start glazing, that you wait until your piece is completely dry. Okay, and not just dry to the touch, but if it's acrylics, leave it for a good 10, 20 minutes before it's dry. If it's oils, definitely leave it for a few days, if not a week or so, before you actually attempt these glazing layers. Because if you do, and it's not completely dry, you'll just end up picking up the paint underneath, and the whole effect will be ruined. So there are actually a couple of things that we can do with glazing. The first, what I'm going to show you is how we can add some shadows. So I'll keep it black and white for now. I'm actually using a different brush now as well, just because I couldn't be bothered waiting for my others to dry. So I thought I'd get this one. It's really important when you're doing this that you use clean water, because if you don't, all of your colours will muddy together and it won't actually work very well. And you're actually sort of watering down your paint enough that it's almost transparent on your palette and you don't want it to actually leave that much of a mark and all you're doing is just slowly brushing it over and you probably can't even tell from the video that this is making that much of a difference on this piece okay, but what we're going to do is just build it up in layers and you will eventually see a little bit of a difference but i'm just using some of the black here, watered down quite a lot, just to add some shadows into my painting. Let's put some up at the top as well. Okay, so you can see you can darken areas really nicely without losing that detail underneath. And again, just like before, when you're mixing these layers and making these colour adjustments, make sure you wait for each subsequent layer to dry. I've actually just adjusted the brightness on my camera a little bit just so you can see it a little bit more clearly. I should have done that right at the start, but for some reason I didn't. So what we're going to try now, now this is completely dry, or dry enough for what I'm going to show you, is we're going to try and add some colour. So what we'll do, we'll start with the left hand side with the stripes, and all I'm doing is using a little bit of burnt sienna, and again watered down so that it's almost transparent on your palette. And all we're doing is giving a wash. And all those areas of white are picking up that transparent colour. But the black stripes are remaining black. They aren't picking up that transparent colour at all. Washing over with that thin paint. Adding colour to what we've put down. Tell you what, let's transition that now into a little bit of a raw sienna again watering it down a load and we'll put a little bit of yellow ochre in there as well so we'll make this part of the fur a little bit more yellow right, hopefully you can see how it's changing the color of that fur quite a bit but it's still leaving those details showing through then once that initial layer is dry you could actually go over it again just to add a little bit more saturation you can see that's making a massive difference and making it even more orange. I've not actually waited long enough for this to dry, which is why some of the colours underneath are actually pulling up as well. But if you leave it long enough to dry, so a good couple of minutes, I left mine for about a minute, but you probably want to leave it for about five minutes between each layer, and you can actually put down quite a bit of paint before you start losing those details underneath. So we'll do the same thing for the yellow fur. This time we'll just use some pure yellow ochre, again watered down to an almost transparent wash. And we'll just put it over the paint that we've already put down. And you don't have to even stick to conventional colours for this. So you could do, let's say, 
why don't we do a blue? Now you don't really see blue fur in nature, so let's do a bit of blue. And you just do the same approach, just glaze those colours over the top. Right, I think we'll make that more intense in a little bit. But all you're doing is just gradually building up, layer on layer, some more colours into the work that you're producing. And just building those colours up a little bit at a time to increase their intensity. Right, to remove areas that haven't quite gone right or have gone a bit too saturated, we can actually just use some water and a brush just to remove it away. See how that black colour came straight back. You can actually do this over and over and over again with lots and lots of different colours. So not only can you change the colour from a dark black and white colour to a saturated colour, but we can also use this technique to actually add shadows and darker regions to our fur and add variation to our fur colours, which is what I'm going to show you now with a little bit of burnt umber paint, if I can find it in my wonderful box of paints. Here it is. So we'll actually get a little bit of burnt umber out and I'll just show you very carefully. We can actually use detail brushes for this step as well. But if we get some burnt umber and we really heavily water it down, we can actually use this to actually darken up some areas of our fur without actually affecting the colours or the details underneath. So the areas of dark fur, you can bring them back with a little bit of colour without messing up those details. And it's just about applying these glazes in the correct places to make your hair appear 3D and give it that nice realistic effect that we want. I would obviously take a lot more time and care when doing this for an actual painting. I'm just trying to show you the process really, really quickly here. But this is basically what I do when I'm painting my fur, just in a very rushed, faster approach. Let's do the same thing for the yellower area. So we're actually gonna mix a little bit of yellow with a touch of burnt umber and a bit of black, just to create a sort of dark yellowy color. But we're gonna do exactly the same thing, really, really water it down, and then just use that detail brush just to pick out some darker areas of that fur. Okay, right, let's do the same thing for the blue. We'll get some blue and mix it with a little bit of black. And again, really, really water it down just so it can use it to pick out some of those darker strands. Okay, so we're just using that dark color now just to build up those layers a little bit and just give some texture and some depth to our fur. Now, once that's done, we need to then add our highlights back in. Because I'm waiting for the blue to dry, let's move on to the orange. So all I'm going to do, I would be studying the colors a little bit more closely if I was painting really, but all I'm gonna do is a little bit of the burnt umber with a little bit of yellow ochre and some white to create a brighter color. And all I'm gonna do is add some brighter fur over the top of my glazes. Again, I'm just glazing that fur, so it's just thin washes. I'm not using thick paint to do this. I'll probably actually do with it being a little bit thicker than that. So I'll just add a little bit more paint to my mix. And all we're doing is adding back in some of that mid-tone coloured hair. Okay, let's do the same thing for the yellow. I think I'm actually gonna go even brighter with this yellow, right? Because I want a nice bright yellow for this bit to show you the next step. So all we're doing is just adding some of those strokes back in. Now we've got the colour down. You know what, let's stick a couple in here just to give it some variation. Why not? But you just want to repeat this process everywhere where you've got those lighter strands of fur starting to show through just to bring them back out because you do end up losing a little bit of detail you just need to make sure you're working over the top of it again with those lighter colors 
So I'm just using the same colour everywhere here because I'm not actually studying a reference photo. But if you were studying a reference photo, you'd actually see there was a lot of variation in the colours. And I don't recommend just using one colour like this to cover huge blocks or parts of the fur. I would definitely mix up the colours you're using. Keep it the same tone. So keep it the same level of lightness and darkness. I don't know how to phrase it correctly. Um, but make sure you mix up your uh, values. Values is the word. Keep your values the same, but just change your colours slightly. Uh, it doesn't look as realistic if you just use all the same colour all the time. It tends to look a little bit cartoony. Even though you've got the details, because your colours aren't correct, it doesn't look as realistic as it should. Okay, let's add a little bit lighter fur to our orange, because that's looking a little bit bland. Just add some more lighter strokes over our orange fur. Now, again, I'm not really focusing too much on the direction of the strands because I'm not using a reference photo. If I was doing this really, I would definitely be paying more attention to where I'm actually putting these brush strokes. Okay, uh, why not? Let's do a little bit of the blue fur as well. So let's take some of our blue paint and a touch of white to that. And let's start adding in some blue fur, just for fun. Get a little bit thicker than that. The thicker the paint, so the less water you add, the more opaque the paint will be, which means it'll be less transparent. It won't be as see-through. So you use plenty of water, it will be transparent, it'll be see-through. If you don't use much water, it will be very opaque and you won't be able to see through the different colours. You'll just paint over the surface that you're working on. I use a combination of both of those techniques when I'm painting my fur. Okay, and then what you can always do to just finish it off, or nearly finish it off, is do some very, very light layers. Because what we can actually do is glaze over it afterwards. So if we do some really light layers, so if you want something that's a really saturated and bright colour, instead of adding white to your mix, paint with a really bright colour, and then we'll do a glaze over the top in a moment. So we'll just add some lighter strands, which we will eventually glaze over in a second. We can even add some really bright highlights in some places if we want, because the brighter the white we use, the greater the saturation will be when we actually do this glaze. So let's just add some final sections that is pretty much pure white. Not everywhere, just save this for the absolute areas that would be the brightest in your painting. We're just building up those tufts just a little bit with this bright white. Right, and we can do exactly the same thing with that brighter white for all of our fur. So just where we want it, just add this brighter colour over the top. Okay, I'm not using it everywhere, I'm making sure to leave quite a lot of that colour underneath showing through. So use it sparingly, just building up those layers of fur. Put some on our orange stripes. Sorry about the noise. This brushwork is horrendous that I'm doing, but you get the idea. Because I'm actually using quite watered down paint here, this will actually dry and won't be as bright in my final piece. It will actually sink into the layers underneath and won't appear as white. And then before we do those final glazes, let's add a couple of darker glazes over the stripes just to bring some of that dark back. So I'm just going to get some black with a little bit of brown just to warm it up a little bit. And we're just going to paint in a few more of those stripes, matching the rest of the fur as closely as possible. So matching that length and that direction as closely as we can. Because remember those stripes aren't just stuck on, they are fur just like the rest of it. Okay. And then for that final step, we just want a final little glaze to knock back some of that white. So let's try with the blue first. 
we don't want as much white in it so we just want to glaze some of that blue colour over the top just to get rid of it and knock it back because you don't really see that pure white in nature very often and you can see how saturated that appears against those white strokes that we did earlier. And the same thing for the fur on top. Let's actually use a bit of burnt umber for this rather than the burnt sienna. Let's brown it up a little bit. So we take our watered down colour and we just apply it over the top and it just knocks back some of that white getting rid of it so it's not as intense. Now, if you wanted to change some of the colours, let's say we wanted to change some of the colours of the yellow fur, we can just add some of that orange, that burnt sienna, burnt umber even, just to some of these sections, just to give it a little bit more interest. Same for the blue, if we wanted to add a little bit of darkness to it, we could add some orange because that's a contrasting colour and we could glaze that in those shadowy areas just changing the colours so easily but keeping those details underneath and it's just about building up in layers like this over and over and over again until you get the look that you are hoping to achieve right i would probably personally for this piece I would want another layer of darks just to really make that fur pop. But for now, this is okay. So what I mean by adding some more darks, I'll just show you really quickly, is just with your darker colours, just add some darker strokes in here and there just to add them back. Just because it was looking a little bit flat, especially in the areas where the stripes meet. They don't have to be everywhere, they don't have to be perfect, but just add it, gives it that little bit more depth. Right, same goes for whatever fur you're doing. Add some of those darker regions back in. Make sure you study your reference photo closely to see where those darker regions are supposed to be. But for me, I'm just messing around and putting them where I think they should be. Again, if I was doing this for an actual painting, I would spend a lot more time trying to get this looking perfect and trying to get that fur in the correct place, in the correct position, making sure it all looked natural. Whereas for this, I'm just doing it rather quickly, just so that you can get the idea of how to glaze. Because I do use this technique in nearly every single one of my paintings. Anyway, that's pretty much it. That covers all the techniques. I know the actual finished piece is not amazing, but it's done the job, or at least I hope it has. If you've enjoyed the video and if you found it useful, please let us know in the comments. We do appreciate it when you respond to the videos, and I do try to reply to every single comment, and I do try to create videos based on what you want. So don't be afraid of asking for a specific video. I'll try to get around to doing it when I have a chance. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have, please let us know in the comments, and let us know what other videos you'd like to see. As always, head over to studiowildlife.com for more wildlife art tips, and again, thank you so much for watching. See you next time!